Game Ranks presents the top 10 Dark Souls 3 items you don't want to miss early on. Because look, we've all been there. Some things just slip past our radar for one reason or another. Maybe we got television and ignored an obvious shiny on the ground. Or maybe we made a mental note to come back to a hard to reach chest later and forgot it. Oh my god! Regardless of the reasons, there are a bunch of items you can get really early on in Dark Souls 3 that will really help you out in this brutally unforgiving world. So, let's start with number 10. Right at the start of the game, in the tutorial area, if you veer towards the right, you should find a path that leads to this giant crystal lizard. Now you may take a look at this thing and immediately go, nope, nope, nope. But really, give it a shot. Killing this enemy will drop a titanite scale, which is invaluable for upgrading powerful soul transposed weapons. If you're having trouble killing it, don't sweat it. Just don't forget to come back for it later. And at number 9, we have titanite shards. Titanite shards are one of the most important items you can find early on in Dark Souls 3, as they allow you to upgrade your weapons, so make sure you never pass them up when they're available. I'm going to really quickly describe where a total of 6 shards are, which will be enough to get your starter weapon up to plus 2. First, head down from the bonfire in the Cemetery of Ash before the first boss battle and leap onto this tomb. For shards 2 and 3, a shard will always drop the first time you kill these transformed enemies with the Black Symbiote on the High Wall of Lothric. You can't miss the first one as you're moving forward through the level, but the second one can be found by heading down the path that doesn't lead to the first dragon from the first bonfire and heading up the staircase. Don't kill them before they transform or you won't get the item drop. You'll find another shard around the corner from the second bonfire called Tower on the Wall, then down the ladder from where the first symbiote is. You can head through the doorway and to the left will be a shard guarded by a pair of enemies just waiting to ambush you. And from the location of the last shard, head back out through the hallway guarded by the knight and then work your way down to the workshop where you'll find another shard along with an item that we'll talk about later. Number 8. Outside the Firelink Shrine along the left side will be a lone half-naked dude with a katana and bad intentions. He'll put up a tough fight and you might just say screw it, it's not worth it. But if you're a dex build, it absolutely is worth taking him out, as he will drop an Uchi Gatana, which is a fantastic weapon with one of the best weapon arts in the game. With it, you can enter a special stance that can either execute a powerful attack or parry an enemy strike without the need of a shield. Plus, it's just awesome to channel your inner Kenshin Himura. Iten Mitsurugi style! Amaka Keru yu no Yudaki! Number 7. For those who prefer more of a strength build, one early weapon you want to make sure you don't miss is found just outside the spot where the dragon is perched on the high wall of Lothric. If you want to live on the edge, you can make a run for it while the dragon continuously spews fire, or you can just spend a few minutes putting a bunch of arrows into him, making him fly away, and then giving you free reign to collect all of the shinies, including the claymore at the end. Oh, and making the dragon go away gets you a large titanite shard. So hey, two items you don't want to miss for one. Number 6. Speaking of that dragon, just inside the room he was guarding, you may notice a lone, completely innocent looking treasure chest that absolutely is not breathing, nor does it have a straight chain compared to the other ones that have a curved chain. Alright, it's a mimic. And as any Soul Series veteran knows, mimics typically hide really good items in their bellies, so avoid getting eaten, avoid the hurricane kicks, kill it, and claim the deep battle axe, which will prove to be very helpful against enemies that lack resistance to dark. Number 5. This next easy to miss item can be found early on in the high wall of Lothric, just before you go down into the first enclosed area. Head to the left instead and climb up the stairs. Go around the dragon and look down to drop onto a platform where you can collect some very handy gold pine resin. This item will enchant your weapon with lightning temporarily, giving you a huge boost in DPS that you can use to take out bosses that are giving you a hard time. Number 4. Estus Flask Shards, oh god that's really hard to say, typically aren't that hard to find, but they can lead to some big problems for you if you miss them. So just be sure not to miss these first two that can be found relatively early on in the game. The first is located in that workshop area on the anvil near where you found one of the Titanite Shards from earlier. The next is in the Undead Settlement, and is the subject of the giant mob's attention near the beginning of the area. Make sure to pick them up, and then deliver them to Andre to give you an extra Estus Flask. Number 3. Like Estus Shards, Undead Bone Shards are not all that hard to find, but they are extremely valuable and you absolutely don't want to miss them. Make sure to pick up this first one in the area of the Undead Settlement, where you're being bombarded by giant arrows. Once you get it, don't forget to burn it at the bonfire to enhance the strength of your Estus Flasks. Number 2. One of my personal favorite rings throughout the Dark Souls series returns in Dark Souls 3, and it's actually in a spot where you can totally miss it. 
In the undead settlement, you'll eventually reach a part where there will be an elevator and a Katarina knife. Instead of taking the elevator down, run on the button and then roll back to send it down without you on it. This will cause another elevator to come down that goes upwards. Keep an eye out for a spot to roll off the elevator and land safely on a platform. Continue moving forward in that area until you get to two big mama enemies. Eventually you'll wind up on the rooftop of a house. From there, continue forward until you're able to drop down to the tower beyond. Work your way down, and at the bottom you'll find the Chloranthi Ring, which dramatically increases your stamina regenerate. Number 1. As soon as you get 20,000 souls, you can purchase a tower key from the Shrine Maiden in Firelink Shrine in order to open up the tower on the top floor of the shrine. Now, I don't want to spoil the surprise of what happens to you when you go up to the top of the tower, but once you reach the bridge, roll off to land on top of the ceiling of the shrine and work your way around to find an opening leading to the rafters. Head this way, past the nest, and then strike the wall to reveal a passage, eventually leading to a treasure chest with the covetous silver ring, which will grant you more souls for every enemy you kill. As you can imagine, this is extremely valuable to have early on. Oh, and you want to know a secret? You can actually get on top of the ceiling without buying the key. Shh, don't tell anyone. And there you have it. 10, well, actually more than 10 items that will go a long way in making the early bits of Dark Souls 3 much more manageable. Thanks for watching this video, and if you enjoyed it and want to see more like it, all you have to do is click that subscribe button right here to open up a world of awesome videos delivered right to your proverbial doorstep. I've been your friendly neighborhood Spidey, and I'll see you next time.